A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Hear this, you who trample upon the needy and destroy the poor of the land. When will the new moon be over, you ask? That we may sell our grain, and the Sabbath, that we may display the wheat. We will, dis- we will diminish the ephah, add to the shekel, and fix our scales for cheating. We will buy the lowly for silver, and the poor for a pair of sandals. Even the refuse of the wheat we will sell. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, never will I forget the thing they have done. Verbum Domini. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior who wills everyone to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth. I am not lying, teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. It is my wish, then, that in every place the man should pray, lifting up holy, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. Verbum Domini.
Christ was rich, he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become Dominus Fobiscum, et <coughs> Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam, Jesus said to his disciples, a rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, what is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, what shall I do? Now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me, I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, How much do you owe my master? He replied, 100 measures of olive oil. He said to him, here is your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for 50. Then to another, the steward said, and you, how much do you owe? He replied, 100 cores of wheat. The steward said to him, here is your promissory note. Write one for 80. And the master commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth, so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. Verbum Domini Uh, first of all, uh, Jesus does not approve what the steward did in the parable. The steward was being fired from his job, and before he was completely out of his job, he was calling his master's debtors one by one, and he let go a portion of the amount these uh, debtors actually uh, owed the master. Obviously, the master did not uh, sent him to do that. His typical job was to collect the money from these uh, debtors exactly uh, the amount that they owed. He had no authority whatsoever 
to dismiss a portion of their bills. He was deceiving these debtors to make them think that he is a merciful man and that he had something to do with giving great discounts to them. You know, he wanted them to think how uh, he's helping them greatly uh, from the burden of these uh, debtors' financial situation. And then at the end, we heard how the master uh, commended the dishonest steward for acting prudently. Now, what Jesus approves of the steward was how he planned for his future. He commended his foresight without approving what he actually did. You know, the steward is very clever. Uh, he knew that, that people would accept him because they would experience this great sense of relief uh, when their huge bill is being discounted by him. And so when he's out of the job, he could take advantage of these people to accept him and perhaps to even make them feel obligated uh, to help him because of how he, quote-unquote, helped them uh, when they had their financial crisis. Again, he planned for his own future. He prepared as much as he could so that he would not live miserably in the future. Again, the master in the parable commended the dishonest steward for acting prudently for his future. You know, our Lord uh, commended his foresight planning without actually approving what he actually did. You know, he approves of how he planned uh, for the future. You know, our Lord reveals that the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. Who are the children of light? We are the children of light. All the baptized, all Catholics are children of light. At least we're supposed to be children of light. You know, we're supposed to give light to the world that is in darkness. You know, how striking it is to our hearts when the good Lord said the children of this world are more prudent in the future planning than we are. You know, secular businesses uh, always make their plans for their future. They have to, otherwise, otherwise they, they would not make any profit and be out of business soon and have to file bankruptcy. You know, they have to plan for their future. You know, they have to make it. Um, this week, uh, Apple released their new operating system uh, iOS 7 and a couple of their new iPhones and and some people are true dedicated Apple customers that every new products come out they would always buy them you know true dedicated customers uh, and for some I don't understand this I know I probably would never understand but for some they even camped out outside of the store the night before just to be there to be one of the first when the, the stores open and be one of the first to get them their products. You know, I'm one of the first to own this thing. Yeah. <clears throat> and you see the company puts lots of effort in uh, planning for their future, planning for their success. You know, they plan for their new products. They work hard in planning to make new products or make better products that they already have, you know, to kind of raise it up in the higher bar. They plan for their customer's reaction, whether good or bad. You know, if bad, they plan how to resolve it. You know, they, they, they expected some of their customers would not like the new operating systems. Uh, they expected, that, especially because of the, the learning cur curve that, you know, everyone have to learn, get used to it, and so forth. They expected all that. They expected all their customers to have to learn something new. And so what do they do? They provide free workshops uh, for their customers to attend. You know, for those who are uh, frustrating, not knowing how to do certain things, the available free workshop 
would alleviate the customer's distress in dealing with these new products. Again, they plan, plan, plan. They plan for their success now, and they plan for their future. St. Augustine said, the children of this world are wiser in providing for their future. And very naturally so, because the desire of earthly pleasure and enjoyment is strong in man. But the aspirations of his soul are blunted and weakened, partly because of the body, partly because of uh, the love of earthly things, the love of things that are passing away. Hence, those that are led by the flesh are more active and energetic than those who are led by the Spirit. Are we, the children of light, doing what the children of this world is doing in regards to our future? You know, are we planning for our future. What, what is our future? Our, you know, our future is not in this world. Our future is not to make new products or more money or more riches. You know, this world is passing away. This earthly life is only temporary. Our future is in the eternal life. Our future is in the next world where there is no end, good or bad. You know, there is heaven, the eternal good, and there is hell, the eternal bad. You know, eternal blessings, eternal happiness, and eternal fulfillment beyond our imagination versus eternal condemnation, eternal bitterness, eternal punishments, and eternal sufferings beyond our imagination as well. Which one do we want? You know, how do we plan for our future? You know, our Lord gives us His instruction. You know, He's, he's the way, the truth, and the life. Our Lord gives us His instruction how to provide for our future. You know, our Lord gives the solution, the true solution uh, for our future. He said in today's gospel, Make friends for yourselves with this honest wealth so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Make friends for yourselves with this honest wealth so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. What is he talking about, this honest wealth? Uh, why, why would our Lord want us to make friends with this honest wealth. You know, here, this honest wealth uh, may be understood in several different senses. Uh, in one sense, this honest wealth are riches accumulated through dishonesty, through, like, you know, fraud or stealing or any unrighteous acts that, you know, we may fall into to accumulate our riches. That's one sense. And in a, in a different sense, uh, this honest wealth refers to riches, are, which are something faithless uh, and something deceptive. You know, I, you cannot depend on your riches all the time. It comes and it goes. Sometimes we have it, sometimes we don't. A lot of times we don't, for most of us. Um, in another sense, uh, wicked and ungodly men esteem this honest wealth or riches of this world more valuable than the heavenly riches, the riches that would never be rotted away, would never go away, would not break. It will always be permanent and lasting. And St. Augustine uh, said to the rich and greedy men, he said, you rich and avaricious men have made money your God. But be assured that it is unrighteous. That is, it is vain and it is deceptive. Augustine exhorted them, break up your idol and give to the poor. And God will recompense you with eternal riches. 
Again, going back to what our Lord said in giving us the solution, giving us the way of how uh, to provide for our future, He said, make friends for yourselves with this honest wealth so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. When we fail, in other words, when we die, in other words, when it's time for us to live this earth, to leave this earth, we're not going to bring our wealth. We're not going to bring our riches. We're not going to bring our treasures of this world to the next. So we have to do something about it with what we have now. You know, <clears throat> how can we do something about it with what we have now? What are we supposed to do with them? Again, our Lord said, make friends for yourselves with this honest wealth so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Who will welcome us into the eternal dwellings? The poor. The poor will welcome us into the eternal dwellings. So with our riches, with our wealth, with our treasures, we give them to the poor. You know, our Holy Father is constantly reminding all of us, don't forget the poor. Help the poor. We are the church of the poor. You know, our Lord raised up the poor. Our Lord have a special love for the poor. They're the ones who will be welcoming, welcoming us into the eternal dwellings. You know, those uh, whom we have made our friends in this life by the right use of our riches, they will be the ones who will welcome us into the eternal dwellings. For they, if they are worthy of heaven, will by their prayers and by their merits make a way for us to enter into the heavenly dwellings, into the eternal dwellings. What if they're not there? If they are unworthy of so great a blessing, we will be received into heaven still because of our almsgiving, because what is given to the poor is given to Christ. Whatever we do to the least of our brothers and sisters, we do to, to Christ, we do to our Lord, we do to our Redeemer. We often think uh, when we help the poor, uh, we become great benefactors to their needs, which is true in this life. But the bigger picture is that the poor become our benefactors in the next life. You know, they receive our benefits in this life, but we receive theirs in heaven. As St. Gregory the Great said, uh, almsgiving is not so much the relieving the necessities of the poor as the offering of gifts to those who hereafter will receive us into everlasting habitations. So heaven is the inheritance of the poor, you know, not for their own possession, but rather that they may introduce those who have been their benefactors. You know, what is a, one of the Beatitudes that our Lord said? Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In summary, this parable of this honest steward, of the dishonest steward, this parable teaches us that we are all stewards of God. We are all stewards of God. We have gifts that God gives us. Maybe riches, maybe intellectual gifts, maybe moral gifts, maybe uh, gifts to encourage people, maybe various, lots of different gifts. Each of us have been given by God because God does not want to give just one person and then that one person kind of help the whole uh, everybody in the world. No, he, he divide all the different gifts to different people so that we use these gifts to help one another. We work together to help one another. We uh, journey together to heaven. You know, each of us have gifts. Each of us are uh, stewards of God. All that we have have been given from God for our benefits and for others' benefits. Every one of us is to use what we've been given to the honor and glory of God. 
we are not to waste the goods that God bless us with. You know, this is one of the things that um, the steward in the parable got discharged, got dismissed, got fired. You know, what is this I heard about you? You've wasted my goods. You will no longer be my stewards. You know, he's, he wasted the master's goods. God blesses us with physical goods, intellectual goods, moral goods, spiritual goods. Every one of us will have to give a full account uh, of our entire life at the day of judgment. You know, we have to do this uh, not only uh, for the sins which we have committed, but also for the duties which we have neglected uh, to perform. What do the secular business do? They plan, plan, plan. We have to plan, plan, plan for our future. The children of this world plan for their future, but it's for the passing future in this world. It's only temporary. We, the children of light, need to plan for our future because ours is permanent future where we shall experience the fullness of joy in Christ in the eternal dwelling of heaven. We beg the Lord and may our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of heaven and earth, leads us safely there through his Holy Mother, he who is not only the true honest steward of the Father, but also the only begotten Son of the Father who has the power to give us eternal life.